It's our garden. From Seeds to Harvest in a School Garden by George and Kana. It's our garden. From Seeds to Harvest in a School Garden. Introduction. When I heard of schools having gardens, I became curious. So I went to visit some schools in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I live. When I got to the Asakea Madre Elementary School, I stopped looking. Under the guidance of teachers, volunteers, and parents, children from the kindergarten to sixth grade spend part of their day working in the garden behind the school building. The school is named for the 400-year-old irrigation ditch across the street. In Spanish, Asakea means irrigation ditch, and Madre means mother. The school is small. Entering the school seemed like entering a home. Outside, behind the school, the shouts from the playground drifted over the quiet children doing chores in the garden. I spent the better part of the year watching and photographing them as they worked side by side with their teachers, parents, and friends. The school bell sounds, and the classrooms explode with the noise of books closing, chairs sliding on the floor, and kids chattering. It's time for recess. The students head outside to the school garden. Mrs. McCarthy, above, the third grade teacher, dreamed of having a school garden. She talked to other teachers, the principal, and the parents, and they all work together to make her dream come true. The garden is cared for by Miss Sue. Right. Miss Sue's husband, Will, designed the, the layout of the garden. College students, Paul, Danielle, Autumn, and Allie volunteer to guide the children in the garden projects. Students enter the garden through an arbor. It's spring and there are lots of chores to be done. Depending on the weather, some classes are held in the open classroom, the garden, or the greenhouse. In early spring, Miss Sue asks the students to make a book with pictures they cut out from seed catalogs. These are flowers, fruits, and vegetables that the students would like to grow. Later, she and the students will decide where to plant them. Every day, one student is asked to take a bucket of food scraps from lunches and snacks and dump it into the compost pile. The compost is made up of soil, dead plants, and food scraps. Inside the pile, red wriggler worms are busy eating and turning these ingredients into castings, which the students call poop. Compost is mixed into the garden beds to provide food for seedlings. Springtime is planting time. These are a few of the seeds that will be planted in the garden. Pinto beans, sunflower seeds, seed potatoes, cucumber seeds. When it's still cold outside, some seeds are planted in the greenhouse. There, students fill small plastic pots with rich soil and plant a seed in each. The pots are left in the greenhouse where the sun warms them. Soon, tiny seedlings begin to pop out of the soil. When they are bigger and the weather is warmer, the plants will be transplanted into the garden beds outside. Flowers, vegetables, and fruits are planted in the beds of rich composted earth. A teepee made of bamboo poles stands in the middle of the garden. Some students plant pole bean seeds at the base of each pole. The plants will grow up the teepee and sprout their pods. Meanwhile, in the morning shade of the school, Paul hands out salad green and flower seeds to plant in a waffle bed. The bed's low walls of adobe brick 
help keep water in. Another group of students plant squash seedlings. Danielle helps a student transplant a tomato seedling. Once the seeds and seedlings are in the ground, the beds are watered and covered with a mulch of straw to keep the soil from drying out. A lot of water is needed to keep the garden healthy. When it rains, water flows off the roof, down a drain pipe, and into an underground tank called a cistern. A solar panel on the roof of the outdoor classroom creates electricity to run the pump that draws water from the cistern. One of the students' favorite jobs is watering the garden. Miss Sue fills the colorful watering cans for them. The tomato plants are surrounded by plastic tubes filled with water. During the day, the sun warms the water in the tubes. At night, the tubes provide the warmth that tomato roots need to grow. When there is no water in the cistern, a hose attached to an outdoor faucet is used to keep the soil moist and plants healthy. Even when the students aren't at school, there's a lot going on in the garden. A post with poles drilled into it becomes a nesting box for mason bees, which don't sting. Birds come to eat at the feeders. Worms are busy eating and making tunnels in the compost pile. Flowers produce a sweet liquid called nectar. When a bird, a bee, or a butterfly goes into a flower to drink the nectar, a powder called pollen sticks to them. When they fly into another flower, the pollen rubs off. Pollen allows the flower to make the seeds that will grow into flowers, fruits, or vegetables. This process is called pollination. In the early spring, a teacher orders butterfly cocoons by mail. When they arrive, the students put the cocoons in a net cage to raise them in the classroom. When the butterflies emerge, they are taken into the garden and released so they can pollinate the plants. Many different creatures live in the garden or come by to visit. Crickets, ladybugs, grasshoppers, and beetles fly, hop, or crawl about. Pill bugs, also called roly-polies, gophers, and even garter snakes can be found living among the garden's plants or tunneling in its soil. There are lots of things in the garden to write and draw about. An easel in the middle of the garden invites anyone to draw what they see or write down their thoughts and experiences. Some students use leaves to make leaf prints. Their art decorates the greenhouse and the outdoor classroom. While the plants are growing during the warm spring days, there is still a lot of work to do in the garden. Students mix sand, dirt, water, and cut up straw to make adobe bricks. The bricks are used to make the low walls for the waffle beds. In the Southwest, adobe bricks are still used to build homes. Adobe is also used to coat the horno, the traditional oven used to bake bread. Every spring, the horno in the corner of the outdoor classroom gets a fresh coat of adobe. There are many different plants in the herb garden, such as basil, tarragon, lemon balm, chives, sage, lemon verbena, and Egyptian walking onions. Every plant has its own taste and smell. Radishes are harvesting in the spring. Miss Sue asks some students to pick the radishes. After washing the dirt off them, the children bite into the bright red vegetables. One girl finds hers too spicy and drops it into the compost pile. More food for the worms. On special afternoons and weekends, 
the garden becomes a place where the school community gathers. Students come back with their parents, sisters, brothers, grandparents, and friends. They compost, seed, plant, transplant, weed, water, and dig. By now, the flowers are blooming and the beds are green. The garden is flourishing with so much care. Garden shores continue into the summer. School is closed, but the garden is a beehive of activity. It provides the setting for music and gatherings of children, grown-ups, friends, and families. The music fills the garden with joy. By August, many of the fruits and vegetables are ripe. Cooking and eating becomes an ongoing activity in the garden. A father helps the children make pizzas on one community day. First, they mix and punch the dough. Then they roll it out with a rolling pin and pour oil on the flat dough. Ripe tomatoes are cut up and go on top. And last, of course, is the grated cheese. After a hot fire burns down in the horno, the coals are leveled and the pizza goes in. When the sizzling pizza is taken out, a group of hungry gardeners appears. The slices disappear like magic. Fortunately, there are many more pizzas to come. Summer is over and another school year begins. The leaves on the trees are turning color and many of the garden's fruits and vegetables are ready to be picked. Students take turns disappearing into the teepee to pick pole beans from the vines. One of the garden beds was planted in a traditional Native American way. It's called a three sisters garden. Corn is planted together with pinto beans and squash. The bean vines grow up the corn stalks. The corn and squash leaves shade the soil to keep it moist. Pinto beans are harvested after the pods dry up and turn tan. By September, most of the tomatoes are ripe. Each student is given a limit as to how many they can pick, so there are enough left for later classes. As the fall goes on, the days start getting cooler. Some of the tomatoes are still green. Allie shows the students how to ripen green tomatoes by putting them into a paper bag with a banana. Miss Sue sh shows some children how to harvest potatoes. Using a shovel or a trowel, the students carefully dig down next to the stem. Since potatoes spread out as they grow, digging must be done carefully so that the shovel cannot cut into them. Later, Allie helps them identify the different kinds of potatoes they have harvested. Cabbages are a real challenge to pick. Their long, strong roots test the strength and stamina of some of the bigger kids. Lemon cucumbers, also called apple cucumbers, are a new experience for most of the students. The children like them because they can be eaten like apples. In the Three Sisters Garden, the strawberry corn is ready for harvesting. The ears are taken off, off of the stalks, husked, and kernels picked off of the cob and saved in a jar. Later, the kernels are heated in oil and turned into a delicious popcorn snack, much to the students' delight. The harvest becomes a chance for Miss Sue to quiz the students on the variety of crops the garden has produced. She makes a game of the, of the quiz, placing the answers face down on slips of paper under each fruit, vegetable, or herb. To celebrate the end of the harvest, a series of lunches is prepared with many of the garden's vegetables. These become festivals of good food and fun. The last community day of the year brings students and families together to prepare the garden for winter. The air is crisp and cold. Frost has turned the trees to gold. 
Winds have scattered many leaves to the ground. The green plants of summer are shriveled and brown. Dead plants are yanked out of the ground and put into the compost pile. Compost is strained and mixed into the soil. The strawberry plants and beds are mulched with straw and all is ready to be covered with a blanket of snow. Sleep tight, garden, until next year.